guys, today I'm filling my Beauty Empties at number 17. If you guys have never seen one of my empties videos before, I'll have my playlist linked down below. And I like to film my empties videos every three months to make sure I have a decent amount of products to share with you guys. I split everything up into categories with timestamps of when the category starts in case you don't want to watch everything. That will be listed down below and I will also list and link all the individual products for you guys just so that I'm being as helpful as possible for you. These usually get to be long videos so I'm going to go ahead and get started with body products. So somehow this category always ends up being randoms plus body products. So starting off with a couple of random things, I have two Bath & Body Works wallflowers. I used to never use anything like this. And then my mom got some for Justin and I for Christmas and we actually really enjoyed them. So we have one in our front room area, which is a pretty large room. And then I have one in the makeup room, our spare bedroom. And the two scents that I used up would be Mahogany Balsam, which I think was like a Christmas scent, and then Mahogany Apple. I love the mahogany because it just is warmer and mahogany mixed with apple was so good. I really, really liked both of the scents. I would recommend both of them. I probably would repurchase both of them, but my favorite was the mahogany apple. So I love wallflowers. I think they work well but they work best when they're in a small room, like a bathroom, because you can really get the smell well. I can definitely smell it sometimes in the spare room, but our front room literally is an entire open space where we have our living room, our dining room, the kitchen is all kind of like a one open space. So sometimes I smell it when I'm walking by, but otherwise I don't smell it so much because it's not contained, if that makes sense. So I will probably get these again when they're on sale, but I wouldn't pay full price for them. And then the other thing is a repurchase. This is the Dr. Bronner's All One Hemp Peppermint Pure Castile Bar Soap. I buy these from Target. You can probably get them at other places as well. This is a bar of soap that I use to clean my beauty sponges. These last me a really long time. They are pretty inexpensive. And let me know if you guys use the liquid version for your makeup brushes, if you like that. I'm using baby shampoo and I think that works nice, but I've heard good things about the Dr. Bronner's liquid soap and the bottle is ginormous. So please let me know your thoughts on that, but I'll definitely continue to repurchase this. I do not like using liquid for my sponges. I think that this really helps me to like get all of the grime out of the sponges. So this I think is great. So for the actual body products, I don't have a ton. The first thing I finish is the Bath & Body Works Country Apple shower gel. This is one of their classic vintage scents that I usually am able to get this on one of their semi-annual sales. That's usually when I stock up on those kind of products because I don't like to pay full price for them, but Bath & Body does have coupons and sales all the time. I love the Bath & Body Works shower gels. They are my favorite. I think they lather nicely. They have a nice scent. On my skin, they don't last once I get out of the shower, which is a bummer, but they might last for you. My skin is just kind of picky, but I love these and I will definitely get Tantry purchased them and I really did like this scent. Then I finished my Holy Grail deodorant which is the Dove Dry Spray and this is the Clear Tone Skin Renew with these little pearls on it. Now this one is like a different scent and a different formula than a lot of the others. This is a expensive deodorant relatively. I think it's like six dollars at Walmart which is kind of pricey for me for a deodorant but it lasts me usually three months. I love it. It does help keep me from smelling and from sweating. I know antiperspirant isn't good for you. I personally need it and I'm going to keep using it. So I love this. I really, really recommend this. If you're looking for an antiperspirant, I think it is great. And because it's clear, I don't have to worry about getting those white marks on my clothes. And then everything else for body products are samples. So I'm currently doing Project 10 Pan Sample Editions. I'll have my playlist linked up here and I'm just trying to use up my foil packets and deluxe size samples of hair, skin, and body products so that I can work through those as well. So you will see some of these in this empties that have been in other projects just to let you know. So the first sample I finish is the Derma Doctor KP Duty Dermatologist Body Scrub. If 
you don't know what KP stands for, it is keratosis pilaris. And on the packaging, there is a chicken because the nickname for that is chicken scratch. They're basically these little bumps on your skin, a lot of times on arms. And for me, they're little white bumps that get really red when I get hot. And it takes a really long time for the redness to go away. And I didn't love this. It was a really harsh exfoliator, very sandy, which I like. But afterwards, my arms felt really dry and itchy. It could be because the sample was old. It could also be because it was the winter time. But because I didn't think it was great, I'm not going to repurchase this. Like, it did make my skin feel soft right away. But then a little while later, my arms felt rough again. So for me, I don't think it's worth the money. Then I finished two samples of the Gardener's Hand Healer Lotion, which I think you can purchase at Ulta. This was a nice non-scented lotion that did deeply moisturize my hands without leaving them feeling greasy. So I think that was nice, but I hardly ever use lotion and I have quite a few that I need to go through. So I will not be repurchasing that. And then I finished up a perfume towelette of the Penrose Wild Child. I didn't care for this. Um, it wasn't my kind of scent. Definitely do not think I would purchase this. And lastly, I got some perfume samples and a couple are used up and most of these I only used a couple times, hated the scent and I'm not gonna force myself to use them. I have two Juicy Couture Viva La Juicies. I love this, totally want to buy it in the full size. That is a great mixture of fruity and florally, which is my favorite. I have the Elizabeth and James Nirvana Black and Bourbon. These are way too strong for me. Do not like them at all. And then I have the Flower by Kenzo L Elixir. This one's a little too sweet powdery grandma. The same for this Olympia by Paco Rabano. And then I, I actually did finish up the Jimmy Choo Blossom. That was okay, but I didn't like it enough that I would repurchase it. So most of those I thought were super stinky, but I definitely would purchase the original Juicy Couture Viva La Juicy. I'm really particular about scents. I like a good mix of floral and fruity. I do not like too much straight floral. I think that smells kind of stinky. Also, I'm not really into the deep warm scents, except for YSL Black Opium. That's like the exception. So I was not a fan of most of those. Moving on to the hair care products, I have three deluxe size samples that were in a previous project pan. First, I have the shampoo and conditioner of the Tresemme Luxurious Moisture. I think the size of this is absolutely fantastic for traveling because you could use this every single day for a week, a week and a half, depending on how much product that you use. And this will last you an entire vacation. I find that some bottles of travel hair products are way too small and you need to bring like two of each. So I think the size of these are great. These are okay. I have very oily roots, so I do not need moisture there. I just need moisture on my ends. I'm not gonna purchase them because it isn't perfect for my hair type, but I do think that they are nice quality. Then I finished up my Holy Grail conditioner, which is the L'Oreal Ever Pure Smooth Conditioner in the Rosemary Mint Scent. L'Oreal recently revamped this line. The packaging looks different. They changed some of the scents and some of the targets. Like this one is a smoothing. I think they have some for moisture and frizz and all kinds of things. So I did repurchase this, but now instead of smooth, it says it is frizz control and it is marula oil instead of rosemary mint, which is sad because I love that scent so much. So I'm gonna keep using that conditioner and I'll see if it works as well as this one, but I do love this line. I think that for a regular conditioner, it does deeply condition very well. That is my holy grail conditioner and I feel no need to try anything else, to be honest. Then I used up a travel size of the Dry Bar Detox Dry Shampoo. This is awesome. It does give you a white cast, but it is easy to blend out. It's so soaks up all of the oil and makes your hair look so fresh and clean. This also has a really great sweet scent. So your hair not only looks good, but it also smells good. This is a very pricey high-end item, so I don't think I'd repurchase it. But if it was available for a 100 point perk, I would probably pick it up or if I can get it on sale because this actually was really, really good. You all know I love my Suave $3 dry shampoo. I'll probably continue to repurchase that, but I do think that this one's better. And lastly, for hair, I finished up the Garnier Nutrice 
Face Nourishing Color Cream in the shade number 93, Light Golden Blonde. This is my hair dye. I almost have to do it again. I must have done this right after I filmed my last empties. This is my favorite hair dye for the formula and the color. It is a nice conditioner consistency, so it's easy to work into the hair. I don't like hair dyes that are too thin because it's very messy and it's really easy to miss spots. And I always get my mom to dye my hair. I never do it myself because I don't trust it. I have a lot of hair to work with. I absolutely love this, highly recommend it, and I definitely will repurchase it. And if I ever want to try out another color, I'll pick a different shade from this line. So moving on to skincare, I do have one product I'll be tossing because it has gone bad. This is the Garnier Clean Plus Makeup Removing Lotion Cleanser. And this is amazing, especially for dry skin because it will leave your face feeling moisturized. Estee Lauder makes a product like this, but of course it costs a lot more. I am really, really, really upset because Garnier discontinued this, which is a huge bummer. I will try to find a link on eBay or Amazon for you guys because I think this is great quality. I unfortunately just opened this at the same time that I opened up some other products and I wasn't able to finish it up before it expired, which sucks because this is a phenomenal, phenomenal product. Also from the same line is something I used up and I opened these at the same time. And I think with probably using other things, I've stopped doing that with skincare. I only open one thing at a time till I use it up, which can be hard, but it's for the best. So the thing I actually finished is the Garnier Clean Plus Gentle Clarifying Cleansing Gel. So I like both of these. And the lotion you put on dry skin, the gel you put on wet skin, which is why I love it even more because I will use this when I'm taking a shower at night. That way I can just break down all of my makeup. And I love using this because I don't go through my wipes as quickly, which is great because it is really easy to spend a lot of money on wipes. But this lasted me months and months and months and months and months using this. I think this is fantastic. It does break down all of my face and eye makeup and it leaves my skin Again, feeling really soft and this does not moisturize so I love this for a normal combo oily skin if you have dry skin I would recommend something like this and you can use this I would just recommend moisturizing when you get out of the shower both of these are discontinued I think that is such a huge bummer I think that Garnier should have kept all of their cleansing products because they really would have made themselves stand out as a brand because they used to have a cleansing oil, cleansing lotion, cleansing gel, the micellar waters, and makeup removing wipes. If they had all of those, that would really set them apart from other brands. I don't think that they had to discontinue all the other ones so they could have a micellar water. So I don't know why they did that. I didn't even realize how much I love this until I started using this consistently a couple months back till I used it up. And I did repurchase this from eBay. So again, I would try to find links for both of these things for you guys and I recommend you stock up if you love it because it's freaking discontinued. But this is now my favorite cleanser. I love it because I can use it in the shower and I don't feel the need to try anything else besides having this cleanser and these wipes. It's all I need. Of course I have three of my Neutrogena makeup removing wipes. I have two of the full size and one of the travel packs. As I always tell you guys, these are my Holy Grail makeup remover wipes because they don't sting my eyes and they remove all of my heavy duty face and eye makeup. My skin does feel a little bit oily afterwards, but I always go in and cleanse. Holy Grail, the best makeup removing wipes ever. I like to get the big pack from Costco. I will have that link down below. It's a great way to get these makeup wipes for a good price because they can be pretty darn pricey. My next product is the Glam Glow Thirsty Cleanse Daily Hydrating Cleanser. And I did not find this to be extremely hydrating. I didn't notice it giving me any more moisture than any other face wash and Glam Glow is a very expensive brand. I definitely did not hate using this but I didn't notice anything special from it and I would not repurchase this. Next I finished up a toner which took me quite some time. This is the Mario Badescu Keratoplast Cleansing Lotion and the Mario Badescu Keratoplast line is made for people that have a lot of redness, sensitive skin and I purchased this because I do have a lot of redness in my cheeks. Whenever I am cleansing my face, my face does get a 
a little bit more red and this was very very calming and it wasn't harsh at all this was good to make sure that I got off any grime or dirt or leftover makeup for my skin or any leftover cleanser this was nice and very gentle but I prefer a toner that is a little bit stronger I feel like it's doing something more for my skin so while I think this is good especially for some with sensitive skin I like other products better for myself so I am not going to repurchase this then I finished up the Caudalie Resveratrol Lift Face Lifting Moisturizer you guys know that I really really loved the eye cream and this was good but it wasn't great and also this is a moisturizer for oily skin now when I heard face lifting for some reason I thought oh this is going to be very moisturizing it was not. It was a light amount of moisture, which is great for the daytime for me, but I would not recommend this for someone with really dry skin or if you're wanting a intense night moisturizer. It was good, but because Caudalie is so expensive, I definitely don't think it's worth the money. And then I used up a couple moisturizer samples. I have a great go-to daytime moisturizer, but I'm still looking for something good for the nighttime. So I used up the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream. This was really nice. This is unscented and it did moisturize really well. I don't know if I'd repurchase it or not, but I did enjoy it. Then I finished two of the Murad Hydrodynamic Ultimate Moisture. This did moisturize my skin really well. I did like these as well, but I do know Murad is an expensive brand. And then I have the Fresh Lotus Youth Preserve Face Cream. This did moisturize really well as well. All three of these gave great moisture. I liked all three of them, but I liked the Fresh the best. And I'm pretty sure Fresh is the most expensive out of the three. So I don't think I'll be buying any of these because of the price, but these were really nice and I think that the first aid beauty is probably the cheapest but I'll still be on the hunt and maybe try to find something in the drugstore for a night cream but these were all really good and lastly for skincare I did finish up one eye cream this is the Estee Lauder new dimension fill and firm eye system it has two different eye creams I only used one of them I think I used Yes, I use the firm eye cream. The fill eye cream is a really, really thick consistency that's hard to work with. I don't like them. You're supposed to layer them, which I think is kind of annoying. You should be able to just use one. This did not do anything for me, and Estee Lauder is a very expensive skincare brand, especially the New Dimensions line. I don't think it's worth the money. I will not repurchase this. My favorite eye cream is still the Caudalie Resveratrol Lift eye cream, so if I ever buy the full size of that, which is pricey I think that is worth the money more than this one is and now lastly for my empties I have all of my makeup products I have some things I've hit pan on I have a couple things that I will be tossing and then I have actual makeup empties so starting with the things I've hit pan on I did hit pan on my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder and Transparent this is my Holy Grail Dutch Up Powder I always keep this in my purse and always repurchase it so I highly recommend that as a touch up powder for oily skin I hit major pan on Wet n Wild Brulee, which is an amazing matte cream eyeshadow. I also hit pan on three ColourPop eyeshadows. These are all the matte finishes, which are really easy to hit pan on for some reason. A lot easier than the shimmer shades, for me at least. So the first shade I hit pan on is Brady, which is a really pretty color. I'm not sure if you guys can see that little pin prick of pan, but I think it definitely counts. I love using this as a crease shade. And my other two shades, I use my lower lash line, applying with a sponge tip applicator. So I hit pan on these really fast because I'm kind of digging in the pan to make sure that the applicator is coated. So these are really easy to hit pan on. This first shade is in a pickle by ColourPop, if you guys can see that pan. Actually, this is what I wore as a transition color, so it wasn't as easy to hit pan on this one. And then this one was in the shade Daddy that I used on my lower lash line, so this one was pretty easy to hit pan on. But nonetheless, it is pretty exciting that I did hit pan on three ColourPop eyeshadows. I have one new item I hit pan on, and then I did really expand the pan on a couple products I have showed you in the past, so I figured I would just show you what the progress looks like now. So from the Wet n Wild Walking on Eggshells Trio, I had previously hit pan on the lid shade, but as you can see, the pan has really expanded. And then just a couple weeks ago, I hit pan on the crease shade from this trio. So that is very, very exciting. Like this is just so cool to look at and see all of that progress on eyeshadows, which is so exciting for me. 
And then I have Matte Malloy from the Balmy Matte Nude, which is just a matte white shade. In my last empties, it was a tiny pin prick of pan, and now look how much I have. I use this on a daily basis to set the primer under my brow bone. Absolutely love this, and I'll be really sad whenever I use it up. So now I'm going to show you the products I am throwing away. Most of these have expired, and a couple of these are just older, and I don't want to give them away to someone. If you guys have not been following along, I did this year start a new series called the Chopping block will I declutter. I'll have that playlist linked up here in my last update is where I talked about all of these products and let me know if you guys want me to include in this video the things that I am throwing out or just in the chopping block videos. Do you want me to give you guys that info? For today, I'm going to do both, but let me know what you would prefer. I think I'll actually throw up a little poll. Do you want me to include the makeup I'm tossing in my empties or just put it in the chopping block videos? I'm very excited because it's going to be my very first poll question, so I hope you guys do it. So first, I have four of the Revlon Jespa and Kissable Balm Stains. I was trying to use up this shade, honey. I was very, very close on it, but I had a terrible reaction because it's expired. And this is a shade that I probably purchased in the middle. My first shade was Cherished. So if this one has gone bad, then that one definitely has. So I don't want to chance it. I'm going to get rid of all of these because I have had them for years. They're amazing lip products. I highly, highly recommend them. The shades I have is Honey, Cherish, Darling, and Crush. Darling's been discontinued. The other three are still available. I really do recommend those lip products. I'm not going to repurchase them because I already have so many lip products, but I really do enjoy them. Then I have two shades of the NYX Butter Glosses. I've also had these for years. I have these shades Meringue and Maple Blondie. I have 10 Butter Glosses, but I would get rid of all of them in a heartbeat if I could just keep these. So I'm not going to repurchase them right now, but I will in the future because I think the quality of these are fantastic. Then we have two products I am throwing out that haven't exactly expired, but they are a little bit older and the formula is kind of funky. So the first one is the ColourPop Ultra Matte Lip in the shade Shimmy. This is one I've had for a while and the formula has gotten a little bit more dry and cracky. Also, this color is a little bit too light for me, but I was just noticing, look at this. You see how hot pink that area is? That's very odd considering the color of this liquid lip. So yeah, I'm definitely throwing that away. Then I have an Ultra Satin Lip in the shade Spritz. I'm pretty sure from the beginning, this had a funky formula. I think I just got a bad one and it has just gotten worse over time. This is not the same as the other Ultra Satin Lip formulas, which is why I will be tossing that. And the rest of my makeup are things that I have completely used up. I did go into full detail reviewing these products in my last update for my Project Use It Up 2017, which I will have linked up here. I'm not gonna go into all that detail today because this video is already going to be long. I'm just gonna let you know whether I repurchase them or not. If you want more details, check out that video. I finished the Smashbox Photo Finish Pore Minimizing Primer. This is a little travel size, only $16, and this little guy lasts me an entire year. That is my favorite pore filling primer. I did finish up one concealer. This is the Urban K Naked Skin Concealer in the shade Fair Neutral. I even took out the stoppers so I could get every little bit out of this. I don't love this formula. It doesn't give me the most coverage, and it also patches off on me when I'm trying to blend it in, which is kind of odd. So I definitely don't think I'll repurchase this. Then I have the Wet n Wild Fergie Mattifying Take of the Day Powder. Great dupe for the NARS Translucent Crystal Light Reflecting Setting Powder Pressed. I have two backups I'm trying to finish up. I will not repurchase this. I'm just kind of over it. My Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Powder in 100 Translucent. Holy, holy grail powder. Of course, I'll repurchase this. I have my NYX Day Matte But Not Flat Powder Foundation in the shade number two nude. Number one ivory is my perfect shade. I want to repurchase number two nude because it is perfect for me to use if my foundation combo gets a little too light. This will really help make my makeup match the rest of my body. So I want to repurchase my shade ivory, but I also want one of the nude shades for that purpose. Then I have two liquid liners that I finished up. The first is the Maybelline Master Precise, which is a felt tip liner. It is a felt tip eyeliner pen. It did dry up really quickly. For that reason, I'm not going to repurchase it. Then I finished up a little mini of the Kat Von D Tattoo Liner in Trooper, which is a brush tip liner. This is absolutely incredible. I really, really like this. And if I can get it for a 100 point perk, I will pick it up. I don't think I would purchase the full size because the Physicians Formula Eye Booster is a really great dupe of it. Then I have three mini mascaras I was using together and I hated 
all of these. The first one is the Clinique Lash Power Feathering Mascara. This has actually been discontinued and I understand why because this is the most natural mascara ever and for what, $15, $16? Absolutely not worth it. It did nothing for me. Then we have the MAC False Lashes Extreme Black Mascara. Also did absolutely nothing for me, would not recommend. I haven't tried a single MAC mascara that I like. Then I have the Makeup Forever Smoky Extravagant Mascara. This brush looks like a freaking Christmas tree. It is so impossible to use, very messy, and also does nothing for my lashes. So I think all three of those absolutely suck. I would not recommend them to anyone. Then I finished up my e.l.f. Lip Exfoliator. This is the original brown sugar scent. They have since come out with a lot of different scents. I did repurchase this already, but in the mint scent. Then I finished two of the EOS Smooth Stick and Sweet Mint. My Holy Grail Lip Balm, of course, I'll repurchase. So guys, that was my Beauty Empties number 17. I would love to know your thoughts on any of these products, and I would also love to know what things that you finished up recently. Please make sure you answer my poll question. I'm so excited for that. And I want to thank you all so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.